said, now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from the expectation of the people. We should have shouted right through there. But that's not my assignment. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, yes. A girl named Rhoda ah. came down. Yeah, yeah. When she recognized Peter's voice because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran and announced that Peter stood before the gate. But they said to her, you are beside yourself. You don't know what you're talking about. Yet, she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, it is his angel. Now Peter continued knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were yeah. astonished. Yeah, right. You may be seated. When they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. And I want to preach with your prayers of God's power. Doubt your doubts before you doubt your faith. Doubt your doubts before you doubt your faith. I read something this week that got my attention. I want to pass it along to you. I read this sign and it says, Faith is like Wi-Fi. It's invisible, but it has the power to connect you to what you need. That's good stuff here. Faith is like Wi-Fi. Man. It's invisible, but it has the power to connect you to what you need. I want that to sink in. Sink in. Let that sink in because the times we live in here now, most of us would lose our mind if we didn't have In 2008, in the state of Texas, uh, it became a battleground for a holy war. It occurred in a town called Mount Vernon. And there is a place called Drummond's Bar. And Drummond's Bar began construction on a new building to increase their business. The local Baptist church started to complain. And they had a campaign to block the bar from opening with petitions and fasting and praying. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were concerned because the bar was growing, but the church wasn't. Come closer. And work progressed right up until the week before the opening when lightning struck the bar and it burned to the ground. The church began to clap. They began to clap and they, they began to cheer. Watch this. 
But the shout went down because the bar owner sued the church. Now listen closely. Sued the church on the grounds that the church was ultimately responsible for the demise of the building. Either through direct or indirect actions or means. The church intensely denied all responsibility or any connection to the building's demise in its reply to the court. And as the case made its way to court, the judge looked over the paperwork and at the hearing, it's a true story, at the hearing, here's what the judge said. I don't know how I'm going to decide this, but as it appears from the paperwork, we have a bar owner who believes in the power of prayer and an entire church congregation that doesn't. And, and sometimes we claim to have faith, but we don't believe what we're praying for. And woe unto us if non-believers believe in prayer more than we do. Many of us have watched a version of Dracula. And in most instances, a vampire goes through town terrorizing people and sucking the blood from their necks. But in one version that I was watching, the vampire stumbled into the sacred place called sanctuary. And he found a priest. And the priest pulls out his pectoral cross. And the vampire laughs at him. And here's what the vampire said to the preacher. It only works if you believe it. Oh God. Yes Lord. The vampire said to the preacher. Watch what happened in the movie. And then the vampire. Proceeds to bite the neck. Of the priest. Draining the blood from him. The one who had the cross. But he didn't believe in it. And I need us right in this moment to have enough faith and conviction that we can say with confidence, I will have victory in the name of Jesus. And you have to believe it with every fiber of your being. Some way, somehow, it's going to work out for me. I'm not just talking about prayer and faith, but I'm talking about the power that's in the cross. And you don't realize how many demonic entities are trying to drain you, that are trying to attack you. It won't work if you don't believe it yourself. But I just believe that there are some people that still believe in the wonder-working power of Jesus. And will you just declare it out loud? It still works. Yes, I can't hear nobody. Shout it out loud. It still works. The blood that gives me strength from, from day to day, it'll never glory. Ooh, my, my. Uh, six people finished it. It'll never mm, lose. Glory be to God. It's power. Mm. Doubt, doubt can be intellectual. Whereby we think about it. And after blow after blow, 
setback after setback. Disappointment after disappointment. Some would start to doubt if things would ever get better. And if we're not careful, the enemy will make us even doubt ourselves. Mm. And slowly, without any warning or without a name tag, you look up and you have become overwhelmed with doubt. Mm. How did this happen? Because we have history with God. And you mean to tell me you still doubt it? So I need some believers who still hold on to faith and conviction who can boldly say, you can't make me doubt it. Oh, I got some help. I, I know too much I got some help about it. And that is why I love him so because he's so Yes. Oh God, my church is waking up. He's real. He's real to me. And there are a few of us who know that I trust him in spite of the evidence. I love him in spite of what I'm dealing with. I refuse to doubt him. Doubt can be emotional. It can be emotional. Watch this because uh, you've been cheated on. Stay here. It can be emotional because you've been lied on. It can be emotional if you've ever been betrayed. If you've ever been abused. Your emotions go through the full cycle of sorrow and disappointment. You don't know what it feels like if someone close to you has never died. You have no idea what it feels like with a trembling hand when you had to sign divorce papers for somebody you thought you would spend the rest of your life with. You don't know what that feels like until you've been released from a job that you have been faithful to and without warning you get let go and they can't even give you a reasonable cause you began to doubt it and when you carry that baggage it goes on your next flight so it's hard for you to move forward because in the back of your mind you're thinking about your last experience. It's hard because you still carry the scars. And so your doubts have become emotional. Do I want to quit this job? Or do I? God help me. Want to see it through. I'm preaching better than y'all shout. Do I want to make this relationship work? Or is it worth it? And I know how we do at the beginning of the year. Do I cut them off? Or do I pull them together? And there is a distinctive difference between disbelief and Disbelief is the decision not to believe. While doubt is wrestling with what I believe. That's cod liver oil, but we, we need to digest it. Disbelief is a decision of not going to believe. But, but doubt is I'm, I'm wrestling with what I believe. I want to believe, but, but it's hard 
is hard when I doubt. I want to believe, but I just need some help. Give me something to go on. I want to believe what you're saying. But my record with you is that you lie. So now I have run out of the benefit of the doubt. God, I can hear nobody shout through that. And there was a man, I'm going to back it up with scripture, in Mark chapter 9, whose son had become demonic possession. He looks to Jesus and says, Lord, I believe. But you gotta help my unbelief. I got Bible readers. And I need you right where you are to shout out loud. Lord, help me believe. I need God to help me believe that the thing from him that's hard to believe. And some of us need to have a transparent moment. God, if you help me believe it, then I can believe it. Lord, help me believe that you can heal every area of my body. Lord, help me believe that you can reconcile what has taken place in my family. I'm coming to get you. Lord, help me believe that the worst is behind and the best is yet to come. Lord, Help me believe that you're still with me and your rod and your staff will come to me. Lord, help me believe that this is my time, that whatever I pursue, I shall recover all. Somebody lift your hand up and raise your head back and say, Lord, help me believe. Help me. Help me believe. Oh, God. I got to move on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've run into Acts chapter 12. entities 
assigned to him to try to keep him bound. God help me here. And he has 16 soldiers and he has chains on. And I need for us to understand that Satan has so much confidence in our ability to get to destiny. Because if he didn't think that you could do it, he wouldn't be piling so much stuff on you. And some of us really should have taken off running right through that. Why, Pastor? Because even the devils in hell know that I'm going to make it to my destiny. And if the devil believes it, then why don't you? But I came today to tell somebody, get ready to break out. Get ready to be healed. Get ready to be delivered. Get ready to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He's put into something with handcuffs. And not only does he have handcuffs, but he also has shackles. And he has 16 guards assigned to him. I'm in verse number 5 of Acts chapter 12 if you want to catch up with me. And while Peter is stuck in a jail, what happens, Pastor? The church starts praying. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. God be with us right through here. Because when we pray today, somebody that's wrapped up in something, oh, God, Something's getting ready to happen to give them uh, an early release. Somebody in your life, yes. Somebody in your family. Somebody in your house is tied up in something. But God says if I can find a church that will still believe in the power of prayer. And while we are connected today, somebody is going to get set free. And I just need a few believers that if you believe in prayer, would you open up your mouth and begin praying for somebody right now? I want you to start praying right where you are. Start praying right where you are. Lord, free them from sickness. Come on, pray. Free them from depression. Lord, free them from anxiety. Lord, free them from a cycle of poverty. Lord, free them from a bad relationship. Lord, free them from making bad decisions. Wherever they are, I'm praying right now because I have no doubt that the Lord still answers prayer. Please touch somebody right now, somewhere, and I need you to pray right now. Because Easter is not going to come with them still in bondage. I need you to pray right now like you have no doubt. Worship our God like you know that. Be still. Answers prayer. Because they don't need what you need. 
and be the people. Right? In shackles, handcuffs on his wrist, chained around his ankles. There's no time. And, and something amazing happens. And Peter falls asleep. Um, God help me because many times we read the text and we drive right by it. He fell asleep. He was able Watch the text. I'm preaching to myself. He, he was able to get a good night's sleep. Yeah. Wow. He was still in it. Yeah. I'm go. and, and some of us, we can't sleep well when we're going through a tough spot. And that's because sometimes we have doubt. As to whether we are going to get out of it or not. But, but for somebody here today or, or connected right now, tonight is going to be the best sleep of your life. You're going to be able to sleep while you're in the process. Watch God pull you through. I see it working. I, I see it working. I see it working. I, 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 I see it working. And, and one of the miracles that get overlooked, I believe, is Peter falls asleep while he's in a jail cell. And, and did I tell you that he was bound in chains? Laying between other soldiers? Did I tell you that? And the angel woke him up. And the Bible says that immediately the shackles fell off. And don't miss your shout. And can I tell somebody who would shout about it? Oh God. When you woke up this morning the shackles that were on you last night, they just fell off of you. And that's why we can praise God like this today. Because when you woke up this morning, the shackles, I'm talking to you, the shackles fell off. And I'm talking to you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I am. If you're thinking about it, I'm talking to you. Because you felt heavy last night. But somehow or another, when you woke up this morning, you felt lighter. Has anybody ever had that moment where you felt like your back was up against a wall? But in the middle of the night, God took the word off for you and, and somebody ought to be shouting it out loud. I don't have no doubt that I'm getting ready to recover from something. And the good news of the gospel is that I don't even have to tell you what I'm coming out of but, and all I need for you to do is listen for the sign. Because whenever you hear me shout it's the sound of chains 
fall. I can't hear nobody because it's no way that you're going to be around me and hear silence. Because I got too much. Oh, glory. On me right now. And, and I need a few worshipers who have been carrying some dead weight. If you open up your mouth and give God glory right now, watch it drop off of you. If you praise Him right now, watch it fall off of you. If you trust in God, watch every chain. Fall. And I have no doubt that a miracle is coming out of this. I have no doubt that things are turning around. See, somebody beat me to it. Even now. And I'm trying to get to my next point, but I have no doubt that God is making a way of escape for me. And if you want to ride with me right through there, I want you to wave your hand and say, I just got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Okay. In Acts chapter 12, um, and Pete comes out of it. And he walks right out of that jail. And I feel something pushing us, all of us, right through here. And, and uh, he, he goes to John's mother's house. Uh -huh. And he begins to knock. Walk the scripture said, walk it, walk it. Knock at the door. Mm -hmm. And I want you to see in the text. You got to know this. He knocks at the door. Watch the text. Where the saints are praying. And Pete goes and knocks on that door. And I feel like, Minister Barnes, right through here, I feel like I, I need to talk to somebody who will shout over it. Get ready for doors to start opening for you. Oh, God. I, I feel like I want to preach just a little bit, but I said, get ready for doors to start opening for you. And, and here's what 12 of you will shout about. Is that the person who's got to open the door is the one who doubted you. Mm. I can't hear nobody shout now. Get ready for big doors to open for you. Mm. The doors they try to block you from. The doors they try to lock you out of. Get ready for a big door to open for you. And he is knocking. There is no people. And all 
Rhoda can hear. It is his voice. And when she hears his voice, she alerts the rest of the church. She says, that's him. The woman that we've been praying for. He's standing right at the gate. So can I tell you that the door that's getting ready to open for you it is its voice activated. She couldn't even see him. But when she heard, heard his voice, uh, she had to open the door. And I need to tell somebody if you're too tired to shout. other side of the door. But for those of us who don't mind giving him glory, watch God open a door just for you. Shut mouths. Keep going. Oh! No. 